Hello friends. Last time I have discussed the construction of ruby laser. Today I will discuss the working of ruby laser with you. A uh, ruby is basically three level laser. Ruby is a three level laser system and suppose there are three levels E1, E2 and E3, E4 these are the energy band bands and because energy band means group of levels so we will consider E3 and E4 as a single level E1 is a ground level E2 is the metastable level E3 and E4 are the bands E3 and E4 are considered as only one level because they are very close to each other here the term is metastable level in my previous one of the previous videos I have already discussed about the metastable level pumping the ruby crystal is placed inside a xenon flash lamp and the flash lamp is connected to a capacitor which discharges a few thousand joules of energy in a few milliseconds this is the construction diagram i have discussed in the last video that is of uh, construction of ruby laser where i have discussed that pumping means to excite the uh, electrons or ions from the lower level to the upper level so in this case we use flash lamp to excite the chromium ions from ground level to the upper level a part of this energy is absorbed by chromium ions in the ground state thus optical pumping raises the chromium ions to energy levels inside the bands e3 and e4 this process is called stimulated absorption i have also discussed the stimulated absorption in my previous videos the transition to bands E3 and E4 are caused by absorption of radiations corresponding to wavelengths approximately 6600 angstroms and 4000 angstroms respectively. So there may be excitation from E3 to from E1 to E4 and from E1 to E3. So these wavelengths correspond to 6600 angstrom and 4000 angstrom. So uh, uh, can you tell me 4000 angstrom relates to E3 or E1 or E4 to E1 or E1 to E4? Yes, yes, I, I think so. Many of you will be right. 4000 angstroms relates to E1 to E4 transition because more the energy difference lesser will be the wavelength the levels inside the bands e3 and e4 are also known as pumping levels achievement of population inversion chromium ions in the excited state lose a part of their energy during interaction with the crystal lattice because ruby is a crystal because ruby is a crystal and there may be interaction of chromium ions with the crystal lattice so lattice is the smallest portion of the crystal and due to this interaction the chromium ions they may decay to the metastable state e2 thus the transition from excited states to metastable state is non radiative transition or in other words there is no emission of photons because this is non radiative transition I repeat, chromium ions will interact with the crystal and during this interaction, that is exchange of energy, there will be, there may be loss of energy of chromium ions to the crystal and this loss of energy, this loss of energy is non-radiative transition, photons in mainly do not emit 
during this transition from E3 to E2 or from E4 to E2. And E2 is a matter stable state, so chrome ions will stay there for a longer time. Because the lifetime of matter stable state varies from 10 to minus 5 to 10 to minus 3 seconds. Hence the number of chrome ions goes on increasing in E2 state while due to pumping the number in the ground state E1 goes on decreasing. So in E2 there is increase of chrome ions and in E1 there is decrease of chrome ions. So population inversion I have discussed in one of my earlier videos. So there will be population inversion. So there will be number of chrome ions more in excited state that is a matter stable state as compared to the ground state E1. Hence the population inversion is achieved between states E2 and E1 that is there will be more number of chrome ions in state E2 comparative to the state E1 this is known as population inversion. Achievement of living. Few of the chrome ions will come back from E2 to E1 by the process of spontaneous emission from from E2 to E1 by emitting photons and spontaneous emission means that is by its own after this minus 8 seconds. The wavelength of a photon is a 6943 angstrom. 6943 angstrom. This photon travels through the ruby rod and if it is moving in a direction parallel to the axis of the crystal, parallel to the axis of the crystal then it is reflected to and fro by the silvered ends of the ruby rod until it stimulates the other excited ions and cause it to emit a fresh photon in phase with the stimulating photon. I have discussed about this thing about this optical resonator system in the construction part. I repeat it again for you, optical resonator system with the help of this system one photon that is emitted during the spontaneous emission will move to and fro in between these silvered highly reflecting rods or mirrors. One photon will strike suppose with this end then it will be reflected back, it will be reflected back, it will again come to the medium and it will stimulate the another chromium ion to de excite. So this photon will act as a stimulator and it will de excite the chromium ion from E2 to E1. Because there is de excitation of photon from E2 to E1, so there will be two photons, one which act as a stimulator and one that will be achieved due to the transition of chromium ion from E2 to E1. So two photons will reach at this end. Again, these two photons will be reflected back and will come to the medium these two photons will decide the two more chromium ions so 2 plus 2 4 chromium ions will be uh, 4 photons will be emitted and this process will continue so until it stimulates the other excited ions cause it to emit a fresh photon in phase with the stimulating photon. This is known as stimulated emission. Thus the reflections will result in stimulated emission and it will result in the amplification of the stimulated emitting photons. So laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So stimulated emission is the principle of laser. I have already discussed the process of stimulated emission in my one of earlier videos. This stimulated emission is the is the laser transition. The two stimulated emitted photons will knock out more photons by stimulating the
chrome ions and the total number will be 4 and so on. I have discussed already this thing. This process is repeating, repeated again and again, again and again and when the photon beam becomes sufficiently intense then a very powerful and narrow beam of red light of wavelength 6943 angstrom emerges to the partially silvered end of the ruby crystal. So the output of the ruby rod is, output of the ruby laser is 6943 angstrom. So we have given in the input almost 6000, 4000 angstrom but we are getting the 6943 angstrom laser beam in the output. In the energy level diagram, E2 is the upper laser level and E1 is the lower laser level. Because laser beam is achieved in between, in between these levels, because the ruby laser fits into the definition of three level laser system. This is our upper laser level, this is our lower laser level and we consider these this energy band that is group of level E3 and E4 as a single level. So we have three levels E1, E2 and E3, E4 together. So Ruby is a three level laser system. Output. The output wavelength of the Ruby laser is 6943 angstrom and output power is 10 raised to power 4 to 10 to 6 watts and it is in the form of pulses. For further reference, please search our website www.venuscience.com. Please subscribe to our channel. If you are liking our videos, please subscribe to our channel. If you want laser ebook, please email venuscience at gmail.com. In my next in my next video, I will discuss about the spiking of uh, spiking that happens in the ruby laser and why four level laser is better than three level laser. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot for your patience listening. Thanks again.